So you watched Ye Long's Basic Guide, and now you're wondering how to build her like mid to late game. So that is what we're gonna look at in this video. We're gonna look at some artifacts, uh, mainly one set in particular, the stats that you're gonna want, some weapons that are gonna be good for her, not just five star, but four star as well, in Ye Long's Artifact Grinding Hell video. Now, yesterday I did go to a Renaissance Fair and I did a photo shoot, as you can see this wonderful photo beside me. And I'm trying to figure out how I can kind of work this into my content, showing some of this stuff off. I wanna do some cosplay uh, photo shoots as well, uh, where this person's gonna be cosplaying like Nilu and possibly some other characters. So I'm trying to think of a way that I can work this stuff into my content, besides just obviously showing it right here. So if you have any ideas on how I might be able to do that, drop that down in the comments. I'm trying to get a couple of different ideas to try out. Now, let's get back into Yelan's video. Uh, we're gonna refresh, right? We're gonna show the same build of the character that we're using. This is still Doggy's Yelan. This is still the Yelan that we used in the first video. And I use a different Yelan later on at the very, very end. Uh, and I don't show her build, but it's gonna be relatively similar to this one. Yelan is level 90 to 90 with 27,700 HP, 1200 attack, 63 EM, crit split 70 over 250.9 with 202 ER and a Hydro Goblet. For weapons, level 90 Aqua, which is her signature, and we'll talk more about this weapon later. Four piece Emblem of Severed Fates, of course, that is her best set. She is C1, so she will have an extra use of her skill. Her talents, 288. So, now let's go look at the team that we ended the basics guide video using this Nilu Yelan Farina Jean flood team. This team is very, very interesting. It is a, uh, I call it a flood team. Some people call it a mono uh, um, hydro team. This just overwhelms your opponent with as much hydro as possible. You're not causing reactions. You're not doing any of that unless the enemy already has an element on them. This is simply just putting out so much hydro damage. This we would actually be using either Yelan on field or Nilu on field. This is, as you can see, Nilu has a uh, misswitter. So this is going to be a hydro damage uh, where she's gonna be doing a lot of damage through her skill and her burst. So it allows us to bring Nilu onto the field and take use of uh, Farina's fanfare of Jean Swirl with the VV Shred, all of these things Nilu will be able to take advantage of, but she is also going to be using Yelan's burst using the little dice above her to just apply more and more Hydra, right? More and more and more and more Hydra. So it is a very, very fun team to use, especially, especially in the abysses that have like Pyro Abyss Lectors. This team, I, I did a horrible flood team against one of them and actually helped me out a lot. Flood teams can be very, very strong. They're very, very interesting when you can use them because you're just doing so much Hydro damage, right? And most characters are HP scaling. Most Hydro characters are HP scaling, like Farina, like Yelan. Um, you know, Yelan's burst and skill damage are both based off of HP. So getting that Hydro resonance can be very, very good. So now we're gonna look at the artifacts on this Yelan and talk about some stats. Of course, she is running four piece Emblem of Severed Fates. This is Yelan's best set. Probably not would even a second set that could be close. If it was, it's gonna be like two piece Emblem, two piece Hydro, two piece Emblem, two piece Noblesse, something along those lines. You're still almost always gonna have Emblem, but four piece Emblem is her best because we want the energy recharge, because all of her damage comes from her burst, a good majority of it, and Emblem works with that perfectly. So now let's look at the individual artifacts and talk about some different stats. So this flower has attack percent, crit rate, crit damage, HP percent. Her damage scales off of her HP. If this attack percent had been ER instead, this would be a perfectly substated artifact. If this would have been ER, crit rate, crit damage, HP, mwah, chef's kiss, perfect. For plume, ER, crit rate, crit damage, defense percent. If that had been HP percent, then that would have been perfect. Now for sans, depending on the weapon you have, whether you have an HP or an ER main stat, because uh, this Yelan is running her signature, ER main stat. If she's running something like Favonius, then it's going to be HP main stat. Crit damage, crit rate, both good. The defense percent, if that had been HP, would have been much, much better. Hydro Goblet, or HP. I believe it's gonna come down to the substats as well as depending on what team you're gonna run her. And I think if you're gonna run her with Farina, HP might be better because you're gonna be able to get more fanfare points off of the healing of the HP, but that still comes down to substats. Then of course for the circle, crit rate or crit damage, depending on what you need more of, also depending on the weapon that you have. If you're running Favonius, you're probably gonna to wanna to do a crit rate um, unless you can get a fair good amount of crit rate in the substats, then that'll be okay. Now, four weapons, Aqua is her signature. Let's look at it. It's gonna get up crit damage, which is really good for her. It's gonna also increase HP, which is phenomenal. 
And if there are opponents nearby, it is going to increase the damage dealt by 20%, even if they're not in the field. So with her doing so much off-field Hydra application through her burst, this weapon is phenomenal for her. Of course it is, it is her signature. If you do not have Aqua, if you do not have her signature, then you of course can run something like Favonius which everybody gets one for free upon completing the Anima Archon quest, so you should have one of these. Uh, R5-ing it would be very, very good for her. In this instance, you would probably want to build more crit rate than crit damage, just so that way you can proc the passive of this to get more energy to Yaelon doing that. Of course, if you don't want to throw Favonius on her, you do have a Sacrificial Bow, which is also going to get up ER. It's also going to give you like a pseudo C1 because there's a good chance that you'll be able to, an 80% chance, that you'll be able to use her skill immediately again. It'll reset the cooldown. However, look at the difference in energy recharge between Sacrificial and Favonius. Uh, Sacrificial only has like 28% at level 80. Favonius has 61% at 90. That is a massive difference in energy recharge. And if you're running Emblem, Favonius is going to give you more ER and is just going to be better overall. So stick with Favonius over Sacrificial, unless you only have one Favonius to go around and you don't want to give it to her, you want to run somebody else, like a C6 Farazan. Now we're going to look at a couple different teams for Yelon. And the first one that we're going to start out with is going to be a Hyper Bloom team, where we would be running like Kuki, Nahida, Yelon, and then somebody like Ayato would be good. But because of the current Nilu build, we are going to just be using on field Nilu as a Hydro Driver for Hyper Bloom. You can also do this team with like I'll Hate Them if you wanted an on field Dendro Driver. This can work very, very well as well. Now, of course, we are going to be getting a lot of damage off of Yelon through her burst, but it's mainly going to be the on-field Hydra application. And we can just use Nahida on-field to get the on-field, to get the Hydro and the Dendro application, making a ton of blooms, allowing for um, uh, Kuki's skill to trigger it. This team works really, really well if instead of like Nilu, we had a Yado or we had uh, like uh, Alhatham. Uh, and then we would just run a second Hydro character instead of Nahida. That can also be very, very good. You you have a lot of, you can have a lot of different characters in a Hyper Bloom team like this, depending on who you have for your on-field driver. But Yelon's going to work with all of them. Yelon's any kind of normal attack is going to set off Yelon's. Um, burst her, her coordinated damage with her burst so she's going to be doing a lot of damage herself you don't have to build her em you can still build her uh for like with emblem in a team like this where you're getting a ton of damage from her and then whoever you're on field would be like uh i'll hate them or Nahida, or a Yado, or in this case nilu we still have a ton of damage kind of going around plus these hyper blooms that are hitting a lot of damage as well you could even just leave Yelon on the field and allow Yelon to do normal attacks to be her own hydro driver, right? You could do that. Um, and actually, that's a pretty decent use in something like a Bountiful Core. But in a Bountiful Core, in my opinion, you have to build her completely different, right? Because in Bountiful Core, you want EM because everybody's going to be creating those blooms. Now, something else that you can do is if you have like Sino, you can run Sino, which we have a Razor standing in right here. Uh, Sino and Razor can both kind of fill in as an on field electro driver where they're going to be the ones triggering your Hyper Bloom. At that point, you might take Kuki out. You might put somebody else in, like an extra Hydro or, electro, or an extra Dendro, can also be really, really good. Um, but this would also still allow for you to do a lot of blooms. This Razor build would need to be more of like a, a split build, a hyper build, where you're going to get so much EM. Still get a good crit split and ER, and then allow for Nahida's passive or Nahida's burst to share the EM over to Razor. Now let's look at a Bountiful Core. Nilu still has her vape build. Uh, she does not have her HP build in this, so just kind of ignore that. Um, but we are gonna be running like a triple Hydro team where we are gonna have Nahida making or, or uh, giving us our Dendro, also using her burst to share EM around but we still have to run coco we still have to run a healer because bottom of course do self damage and that's you you lose a lot of damage in a bountiful core team now with this though yaylon would not you would i feel like you'd have to build more of like a hybrid build right um, where maybe you can use Coco's Jellyfish to help supplement some energy particles to give Yelon, um, to allow Yelon to still have a good energy recharge build. Now, I feel like in this exact team, you'd almost have to run Nahida as your on-field Dendro, working with Yelon's Burst 
to limit the characters that can produce blooms, right? Where in, in a Bountiful Core team, you almost have to build everybody with some EM, except for Neelu, who you would build HP. So it's it's a very different kind of team that I feel like would require much more of a hybrid build Yelon than a standard build Yelon. Now, for the last team, we are going to look at a Hu Tao Yelon team, which I had to use Zach's uh, Hu Tao and Yelon because Doggy didn't have Hu Tao. So let's look at this team. Hu Tao working together with Yelon is really, really good. As you can see, we're gonna have Hydra Resonance. We're still gonna be getting a lot of HP through Yelon's passive, where depending on how many elements you have on a team, she gets extra HP. So we're getting Hydra Resonance and more HP through Yelon, which Hu Tao wants the Hydra Resonance. So this is actually like a really, really good team. Um, Farina's gonna be buffing. Benny is there to heal the team kind of around. So that way we can get fanfare points from Farina. Yelan is going to work with Hu Tao to create these vapes. Now, I do not play Hu Tao. I want to make that very, very certain that I do not play Hu Tao. This is also a C1 Hu Tao, so the stamina is a little bit better. So if my Hu Tao playing behind me is not the best, that's why. I don't have Hu Tao. I don't play Hu Tao. I play Bountiful Core and Dia, okay? But Hu Tao works really, really well with Yaelon. Hu Tao wants the Hydra Resonance that Double Hydra can give. She also wants the Hydra Applications, so that way she can cause massive, massive vape damage through using her skill to get Pyro Infusion. So she is a very, very good character to slot into this team. Basically, any team that Xing Cho would work well in, Yaelon is going to be better. Yaelon is going to just deal more damage than Xing Cho. And she has a ton of Hydro application. Um, so this is a very, very good, very, very good fit for any team that needs a ton of Hydro application and that might like the Hydro Residence, right? So that is going to be it for this video on Yelon. If you have any questions, you be sure to leave it down in the comments myself or someone else should answer it. And I'll see you in the next one.